Hi, I'm Dr. Tracy Marks, a psychiatrist, and I make mental health education videos. Today, I'm talking about when we do and don't use lithium for bipolar disorder. And this was based on a viewer question from Libby, and she asks, Dr. Marks, will you please talk about when is the best time to take lithium for bipolar? I've had it for years and my doctor never prescribed it. I heard it's the best treatment, but I've also heard it causes a lot of long-term problems. Can you also say what you think about lithium orotate? Thank you. Thanks Libby for this question. Yes, lithium is the first recommended treatment for bipolar disorder, but it's only when you have classic bipolar disorder. Classic bipolar disorder is when you have a clean separation between depressive episodes and manic episodes. I've defined depression and mania in several videos, and I'll link my bipolar playlist in the corner. A clean separation means that when one episode is over, you return to your baseline until the next episode comes and you don't have lingering depression with anxiety mixed in. I've mentioned before that the real classic picture of bipolar disorder is that you have alternating episodes of mania and depression. But for lithium to be helpful, the episodes don't have to alternate and that's probably not the majority of people anyway. There are people who have multiple manic episodes in a row, while others may have mostly depression with an occasional manic episode. But either way, in between, you're pretty free of, of symptoms other than the situational ups and downs of life. Lithium is not a good choice though when you have um, a mixture of mania and depression symptoms happening at the same time. And we call this bipolar disorder with mixed features. So you have the hyper arousal of mania where you're sped up, you may be impulsive, using poor judgment, irritable or angry, while also having at least three depressive symptoms along with your mania. And I describe this in more detail in my mixed mania video. In the case of mixed features, the recommended first choice is an antipsychotic medication like quetiapine. We use the second generation antipsychotic medications as mood stabilizers in bipolar disorder. One thing that lithium does that the other medications don't do as well is it reduces suicidal thinking. The only other medication that addresses this at a similar level is ketamine, which we use for treatment resistant unipolar depression. And by the way, the depression in bipolar disorder is considered to be a different entity from the depression that you get with unipolar depression. So not everything that works for unipolar or major depression works for bipolar depression. So here's some side effects of lithium. Lithium can cause weight gain, tiredness, fuzzy thinking, similar to some of the other mood stabilizers, but lithium also has some side effects that can come along with long-term use. Lithium can cause your thyroid to malfunction such that you start to produce inadequate amounts of thyroid hormone. So some people who take lithium long-term eventually need thyroid supplementation. I've had some patients stop taking lithium because of this problem, and nothing seemed to work as well though as the lithium. Some of these patients chose to stay on lithium and just take thyroid supplementation. The second long-term side effect is to your kidneys. Everyone has some decline in kidney function as you get older, but long-term lithium use can accelerate this process. You can also get a condition called diabetes insipidus, and this is different from diabetes mellitus, where you get elevated blood sugars. With insipidus, your kidneys lose its ability to concentrate your urine, so you get frequent urination and excessive thirst. Diabetes insipidus can happen even within the first weeks to months of taking lithium. It usually resolves on its own, but it can persist in about 25% of people. Sometimes this problem can be helped by taking your lithium all at once at bedtime. If the problem still doesn't go away though, then it's probably best to switch to a different mood stabilizer. If you catch it early, it's reversible usually within weeks. Another way lithium can damage your kidneys is if it gets too concentrated in your blood. It can reach toxic levels and damage your kidneys. And so that's why it's important to have your lithium levels checked on a regular basis. And you have to make sure you stay hydrated. If you lose a lot of fluid from excessive sweating, diarrhea, or vomiting, watch carefully for signs of lithium toxicity. 
early signs of lithium toxicity are tremor, slurred speech, feeling tired and weak. You can also get diarrhea and vomiting from the toxicity. If you start feeling this way, you should get yourself to an emergency room or urgent care to be evaluated. If you're on lithium, make sure all of your doctors know so that they can check any drug interactions from the medications that they prescribe. Also, if you have pain problems, watch your consumption of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications like Advil or Aleve. This class of medication can increase lithium levels. The last part of Libby's question is about lithium orotate. And this is a version of lithium that's available over the counter. It's a much lower dose than lithium that you get with a prescription. And the prescription versions are lithium carbonate and lithium citrate. Well, given all of what I just said about the risks of lithium, I don't know how people can feel comfortable taking it unmonitored. I realize it's a low dose, but because you can buy it on your own, you can take as much as you want. So what if one pill doesn't work well enough? How much more do you take? What will your level turn out to be if you do take more? What happens if you go to a picnic in the heat of the summer? You drink beer, you urinate a lot, you sweat a lot. What does your lithium level look like? How many people even know to check for that? So my opinion about lithium orate is I think it's a bad idea to take on your own given the side effect risks. But as for the prescription lithium, yes, it comes with significant side effects, but it's still a tried and true treatment for classic bipolar disorder. But like anything, it's not guaranteed to work. And if you have mixed symptoms or you just don't wanna take it, there are plenty of other options that you and your doctor can try. Thanks again for the question, Libby. See you next time.